Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest release of Amarok Linux. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you enjoy the channel and like the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. We're at Amarok Linux's website, which is amaroklinux.org. I will be sure to include that link in the description below. And when you come to their website, you're met with the main page. Up top, you have Upon, which is About Us, Blog, Download, Support. You've got your forum, Telegram, and the wiki here. Then it's got a gallery, and then, of course, some videos. And if you come down, it just basically states Amarok Linux is a GNU Linux distribution created at the top of the Debian GNU Linux operating system. It comes with four different desktops, XFCE, GNOME, Cinnamon, and Mate. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Cinnamon desktop, and it has a selection of commonly used pre-installed software. And then down here, it kind of tells you what their differentials are compared to the other distributions. Amarok Linux has four desktops, which we just covered. Amarok Linux is a free operating system based on Debian 11 Bullseye. They provide a forum from which the user can ask their questions that are relevant to Amarok Linux. Their mission is to make the transition from Windows to Amarok as smooth as possible. Software, you can choose from thousands of free and easy to use programs and applications in their app store. And they have their own repository from which they can offer their updated software to their users. It's free and easy to use Linux operating system, which most of the Linux operating systems out there are free to use. There are some that'll charge you a couple dollars for their 64-bit version or for their updated version. Some of them cost as much as $40. And then at home, you can browse the web, email, upload to the cloud, socialize on Facebook, fully free and complete Microsoft Office compatible Office Suite, and then gaming. Amarok Linux's low memory requirements make it ideal as a gaming platform. And then down on the bottom, you have some news. And then you come down, you got contact information if you would like to send them information or ask a question. And this is a Brazilian distribution. So we'll go ahead and scroll back up top. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this now so we can go to the desktop. And I do have it open in GNOME boxes. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And as you can see right now, it says about this computer. It's Amarok 3.3 Amazonia. It's running kernel 5.10.0-10. Desktop is in Cinnamon. And then it gives you some information about the system that I'm running it on. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. As you can see, you've got a great looking wallpaper out of the box. Now, if you would want to change that, all you got to do is right click. You can create new folder, add desolates, change desktop background, open in terminal, open as root, customize. Let's go ahead and look at change desktop background. And you've got some great looking background images here. And they have a great selection of wallpapers. And they're very beautiful. So we can just pick like that. And that changes it up. That is a very good looking background. So you do have quite a few backgrounds to choose from here. And they're all very beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one. And then over here, you've got settings as well. You can play the backgrounds as a slideshow, change your picture aspect, background color. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And with it being cinnamon, you do have one panel and it is on the bottom. You've got date and time over here. You have sound right here, internet, printers, and then package update indicator. Let's click on that. There are no updates. You do have preferences and about. If you right click on the panel, You've got panel settings, applets, move, remove, add new panel, system settings. Let's go ahead and go to panel settings and it opens up. And right here, it's got auto hide panel, always show panel, intelligently hide panel or auto hide panel. You can set that up. If you wanted to intelligently hide, you could click on that. And then if you made this bigger, as you can tell, the panel disappears. Let's go ahead and minimize that down and it comes back. Or you could auto hide panel and it would just hide. Then you could go maximize, and as you can see, the panel is gone. Minimize it back down. Let's go ahead and set it back up to always show. And then, of course, you can customize it. You can change the height of the panel if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and make it a little bigger. You can run that up to 40. And as you can tell, the panel has gotten bigger. Your icons actually scale bigger over here. Then you've got panel appearance, font size, color icon size, symbolic icon size, and then you could go with the center zone of the panel, what you wanted it to do, and then the right zone of the panel, so you can adjust all three zones. And then general panel options. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then we right-click again, 
You've got applets right here. It gives you the ability to add applets down here if you want to. There are several to choose from. And if you wanted to add one, you could just click on the plus or you could do a search or you could manage the ones that are already installed. Now, if there are applets that you want that you don't see here, just go up to download and then you could go search for applets. You've got a weather center menu, different things you can do right here. CPU indicator, you could download it, then slip back over to manage and actually activate them and you'd be good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to the bottom panel, right click, panel edit mode. You can turn that on or off, move it, remove it, add a new panel, and then of course troubleshoot or system settings. I'm going to go ahead and go to system settings. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and maximize that. You've got a lot of different things you can change here. You can change your background. You can add effects, font selection, themes. You can come over to themes. And when those open up, you've got window borders. As you can see right now, we're running Vimix. It matches up here. If you click on that, it gives you a bunch of different options to change here if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it the way it is. And then, of course, your icons are on Papyrus Dark. You could change these around if you wanted to change them to a Papyrus or Papyrus Light. You could switch that. Or you can download other icons and use those as well. And then Controls, Mouse Pointer, and Desktop. Up here, you've got Add and Remove. Let's go ahead and click on it. And then right here, you have several different themes to choose from. You've got Cinnamon, Metallic Scion, Tomcat. There's just different things you could choose right here. If you like those, you just come over here, click Download, and then when you went back to Themes, they would be loaded and you could actually choose them from the menu. So let's go back over here to Settings, and then you can show icon in Menu, show icon on Buttons, jump to a position when clicking, use Overlay Scroll Bars, override the current theme scroll bar. So you have different ways right here to customize the distribution and make it look the way you want it to look. So let's go ahead and close out of this. On the left side of the panel, you have the app menu right here. You have Firefox and then you have the terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal. And what I want to do is see if they have HTOP installed. So let's check out HTOP. And they do have HTOP installed. At present, I have two gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. We are using one gig at rest with just the terminal open. Now, that's not too bad. Um, it's a little heavier than some of the distributions that I look at. It's a little heavier than some of the GNOME distributions I look at. But with what Cinnamon offers as a desktop environment, it kind of stays out of your way, but is still beautiful at the same time. So you can expect that. So let's go ahead and close out of the terminal. Back down to the left, we've got the file manager. Let's open that up. And this is the Nemo file manager. Let's see what version it is. Let's go to help and about. And it is version 5.2.1. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Nemo is a really nice file manager. It's quick. It's lightweight. It stays out of your way, lets you do the things you need to get done. You've got your usual suspects over here. And then, of course, you've got your home folders here. Then you've got your menu up here that lets you make even more adjustments or customizing it to the way you want it to look. Over here, you can adjust it to icons. You can adjust it to a list or you can adjust it to a grid list or you can actually do a search. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Back down here to the app menu. Let's open that up. And as you can see over here on the quick start side, you've got the Firefox system settings terminal and your file manager. Down here, you can lock, you can power off right there or log out. You've got all applications or you've got accessories. It comes with backups, disks, files, text editor, games. You've got Isle Rot Solitaire, Mahjong, Mine, Sudoku, graphics. You've got Document Viewer. You get GIMP out of the box, which is a plus. You've got Internet, which is Firefox, and you've got Qubit Torrent as your torrent client. On Office, you've got Evolution Mail. Now, if you want a Office suite, you'll have to download either something like LibreOffice or Only Office, whatever Office suite you use, you can download. Sound and Video, you've got Pulse Audio Volume Control, VLC Media Player. Administration, you've got Amarok Install, Bytop. G Debbie Package Manager. If you find a package online that is a Debian package and you want to install it, all you got to do is download it. Once it's in your download folder, just right click on it, click open with G Debbie Package Installer, and it will install it onto your system. You have HTOP console package updater. Let's take a look at that. This will be your package updater. If there were updates due, once you open this up, it would tell you that there are at present. All packages are up to date. So let's go ahead and click OK and close out of that. Back up to administration. Then you got parental controls and software manager. So let's go ahead and open up the software manager. And generally, the first time you open this, it will generate a cache. So it'll take 
just a little bit to load. And it is finished loading. Let's go ahead and maximize this so you can see better. And up top, you've got your recommended. And then you have editor's picks down here that include everything from Thunderbird, Calibre, Gnome Maps. And then down here, you've got categories. You could pick Office. Once you opened Office up, it gives you a lot of different things here Office-wise that you could download. LibreOffice Writer, Sublime, Nano, just a lot of different things to choose from here. You can go back to the main screen. If you go up top, you could do a search. We could do something like Caden Live and hit enter. It'll search the software repositories and bring up Caden Live. Now you'll have the option to install Caden Live from the repository, or you can go back and install it from a flat pack. So you do have flat pack enabled out of the box with Amarox Linux, which I think a lot of people will like that because there are a lot of fans of the flat pack. So let's go back. That's how you would install software. Now, Another way to install software is if we go back over here, go to administration, go down, you've got Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Now, this is probably my favorite way when I was using things like Linux Mint and Ubuntu back in the day to install software. I stayed away from software centers because Synaptic was so easy to use and so user friendly. Now, if you come over here, you've got categories. You've got from all, you've got amateur radio. If you go all the way down, you go all the way to system, web servers, video software. You can pretty much look up anything you want to. And then down here, you've got sections. You've got status, origin, custom filters, search results, and architecture. Now on status, it'll show you installed, installed manual, not installed, not installed residual config. And then on origin, it'll tell you if they're local Debian or stable or coming from Amazonia. It lets you know what repositories it's pulling from. Now, you could also go up here and do a search. If you click on search, you could put in something like OBS Studio and click search. And as you can see, it highlights your search over here to the left and then shows you OBS Studio right here. You would just click on that. It would mark it for installation. And then over here, it'll let you know all the dependencies that need to be installed to make OBS Studio work. So you could mark all of those. Now, let's say you wanted to install more than one package. Let's say you wanted to also install GIMP. So we'll look up GIMP. And as you can see, GIMP is already installed. But if it weren't, you can mark it for installation here. Once it's marked, you could go up here and click apply and it would install OBS and GIMP at the exact same time. So that's one of the reasons I like Synaptic is I would go through and pick all the software I wanted to install and install it all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come back down to administration. And we've got terminal and then time shift. If you're not familiar with time shift, it's a way to back up your system, take a snapshot of your system. So that way, should you ever have any issues with your system and need to boot from a recovery USB, you could come in, boot up, go into time shift and restore from a previous point in time when your system was working. Now, if you're using the BTRFS or the BetterFS or the ButterFS file system, you'd want to click here. Everybody else stay on rsync. Just click next. Right here, it would show you the hard disk that you're using, okay? You would just click on that, click next. It would take a snapshot of your system and move forward. So that way in the future, should you have problems, you could refresh it and be good to go and just keep right on rolling. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Go back over to preferences, about Amarok, account details, Bluetooth manager, color, and then of course, places. That was pretty much a quick look at Amarok Linux, the new release 3.3, Amazonia. I'm very impressed with it. If you're somebody that doesn't necessarily like the Ubuntu family or the Linux Mint family, Amarox is definitely something to take a look at. I like it. It's quick. It's snappy, even in a virtual box. I think what it's going to give you that other operating systems based on Debian don't give you is a, just a different feel, a good experience, an easy way to install software by both the Software Center and the Synaptic Package Manager, and overall, just a great looking operating system. What do you think? Is Amarox something you might download, throw on a USB, or put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in my next video.